Okay. So we need a word of explanation about what you're doing. And one way of looking at what you're doing is that you have moved from two dimensions, like a teacher writing on the whiteboard, you're sitting in class, or you're sitting here at home, and your teacher is writing on the whiteboard or something that looks like a whiteboard. That's two dimensional length and width. We are not two dimensional creatures. We are three dimensional creatures. We have length, width and height. I mean, that's real life. So in real life, real life. In real life, we don't just have an x-axis and a y-axis. We have a z-axis. Or if you want to draw the x and the y-axis in its more traditional form, where this is the x-axis. <laughs> I am so bad. This is the x-axis. And this is the Y axis. Then what you have to imagine is that the Z axis, I can't show it because it's coming right out at you. If you're talking about airplanes flying, maybe this is the path of one of the airplanes. And this is the path of another one of the airplanes, excuse me. And this is the path of the third airplane. And there's a study going on. You want to find out where the paths cross up in the air. Now that doesn't mean they're crashing, it just means maybe one, one traveled at three o'clock in the afternoon, one at four and one at five. Um, I don't want anything violent to happen. But you want to know where their paths cross for some reason because it's your job to know. Then this, would be the point where the three airplanes cross. And you could just draw that point there. It will have an X coordinate over here. And it'll have a Y coordinate here. So let's let's make little doohickeys go over here. But it'll also have a Z, a Z um, coordinate because it's up in the air. We don't want them to be down here, that's for sure. They're up in the air. So just like when I draw a point on the X and Y axis, that's described with two numbers, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. And so this is called an ordered pair pair means two when it's spelled that way here this point where the three planes where the paths of the three planes cross each other is going to be what we call an ordered triple, and that's X and Y and C, otherwise known lovingly as altitude, uh, no, latitude, longitude, altitude. Okay, in our reality, those are the main coordinates for everything you do. 
Where are you? On the planet Earth, latitude and longitude. Above the planet Earth, altitude. So X, Y, and Z, each of these are numbers. And um, 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 this is called an ordered triple. Okay, now there are other meanings to this too. Um, the most common use, or at least the one that I'm most familiar with, is something that Amazon does and other shipping companies where, you know, they ship in these great big containers, but they want to find the efficient way to totally load up the container with individual boxes. <clears throat> that uh, these boxes are different sizes depending on what they're shipping. And so um, if you had three sizes of boxes and you wanted to find out what is the most efficient arrangement in one of these big shipping containers or maybe on a truck bed, you know, on a truck, how to fill up the truck most efficiently, then they would use a system like this. And whereas Monday, that was the first baby step into logistics, this is the second baby step into logistics. Again, if you find this stuff easy, you might want to consider getting an associate's degree in logistics. It, the danger there is that somebody's going to be trying to hire you right out of your associate's degree so that you kind of let yourself be tempted and you don't go on for your bachelor's degree. This is a very in-demand career, logistics, for people who are good at math. Of course, engineering uses it also. So let's go on and let's talk about, well, what do you do to solve matrices? There are two major methods. Oh, what is the solution to a matrix? It's where the lines cross, the point of intersection. Now, these are lines in three-dimensional space. Notice that the variables Notice that the variables don't have exponents. Well, they do have exponents. The exponents are one. If you don't see an exponent, the exponent is one. Whenever all of the variables have exponent one, you're dealing with straight lines. Only now these lines are not on a whiteboard. They're in the air. OK, so here we go. There are two methods. There's an easier method and a harder, harder, more difficult method. <clears throat> Excuse me. The easier method is called Gaussian elimination, and that's what we're going to use in this class. However, business majors are going to take finite math, and in that class, you're going to learn something called Gauss-Jordan elimination. But right now, I, like, I actually like Gauss-Jordan. It just takes more patience. Not many of us are patient. So we are going to use the method named after the person who invented this and prove that it really works. Gauss, a German mathematician who changed the world. One of the very big names, along with Newton, 
one of the really big names in mathematics. This is called Gaussian elimination, and it's based on the kind of elimination we did on Monday. So let's get started. There are steps. I've had people this semester and every semester come to me and say, help me, help me, I just don't understand. So try to get your brain around this. There is nothing to understand. It's a method. It's just a method. A one, two, three method. There's no great understanding to it. It's a method that works, so we use it. And that's it. So we are going to use Gaussian elimination. And let me explain quickly what that means. And then we're going to do it. Well, first. Let me show you. We're going to make, this is a system of three lines in three dimensional space that are crossing. I mean, that's the main picture that's given. Um, I'm going to turn this into a matrix that I call matrix one. Because it's the first of four. All right, what I do when I make a matrix is I take the numbers, but first, there's a one here and a one here, and there's a problem when these things print out. They put an extra space between the sign and the number, so you're just going to have to learn to cope with it. I have to. This minus sign goes with the nine. This minus sign goes with the six. This plus sign goes with the nine and so on. So this minus sign goes with the one. This minus sign goes with the two. This plus sign goes with the one. Just to make sure you understand that. Here we go. I'm going to write down the numbers. Negative two, negative nine, negative one, four. That's the first line. Negative four, negative six, negative two, eight. That's the second line. The third line is three, nine, one, negative five. Okay, now, just because it's part of the method, what I do next will probably make sense. Just to separate these three rows, I call this row one, and this row two, and this row three, and I put these markings around the matrix. Okay, the part over here, if you're interested, you don't have to memorize this. The part over here is called the coefficient matrix because these numbers in front of the variables are the coefficients. This little one column matrix, and it is a matrix, is called the constant matrix because these numbers without variables are constants. Together, the coefficient matrix and the constant matrix are called an augmented matrix. You don't have to memorize that either, so I'm not going to write it down. 
you will see it in math books. So remember augmented matrix. It's the augmented matrix that we solve. And the method we are going to use for solving is Gaussian elimination. So here we go. The goal of Gaussian elimination is to change these lower three numbers. Negative four is going to have to be changed to a zero. And then three is going to have to be changed to a zero. And then nine is going to have to be changed to a zero. And remember, there is no understanding why. It's just the method. To change these numbers to zero, we have to use something called row operations. And we did those the other day. We add two rows together to get a zero. We multiply rows by something so we can add the rows to get a zero. Well, now there's another row operation and you'll see it in use. I'll let you know when we're there. But right now, this is going to be our first zero. Then we're going to change the three to a zero. Then we're going to change the nine to a zero, but we have to use row operations to do it. We can't just go ahead and erase the negative four and put a zero. That would not work at all, and it wouldn't make sense. Here's what I have to do. To put a zero in this position, I have to add, that's one of the row operations, I have to somehow add row one plus row two and get a zero in the first position there of row two. Well, negative two plus negative four is negative six. However, watch this. I'm going to take row one and add it to row two, but I'm going to multiply row one by negative two. I'm going to multiply every number in row one by negative two, because remember this is really an equation. So if I were doing this to the equation, I would be multiplying the left side by negative two and the right side by negative two. So this is just a shorthand. I'm going to multiply row one by negative two and then add it to row two. And if I do this, that will give me positive four plus negative four. And that will give me zero. Now this is called my recipe step, or just recipe. The recipe is your strategy. So now let's do this and you'll see what happens. Negative two times row one gives me negative two times negative two 
is positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. That's what I get when I multiply every number in row 1 by negative 2. Now, I don't have to do anything to row 2. I could, but I don't have to. So I'm just going to copy it. Negative 4, negative 6, negative 2, 8. And now I'm going to add vertically. 4 plus negative 4 is the same thing as 4 minus 4, and that's 0. 18 plus negative 6 is the same thing as 18 minus 6, which is 12. 2 plus negative 2 is the same thing as negative 2 plus 2. Um, positive 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2, that's 0. And negative 8 plus 8 is 0. This is my answer when I take negative 2 times row 1 and I add it to row 2. OK. Now the answer, uh, the answer row, if you prefer, this row <clears throat> is going to be my new row 2. Now that can be pretty mind blowing, but it's true. It's part of the method. Now matrix two. Row one, row two, row three. This new row two, is going to go in right here. So I do that first, so I don't forget. 0, 12, 0, 0. But those zeros are too close together. Row two right now is the only row that changes. So I'm going to copy this row one to that row one. Negative two, negative nine, negative one, and four. And I'm going to copy this row three to that row three. 3, 9, 1, negative 5. Put my markings. Now I have matrix 2. OK, I have my zero where I want it. The third row operation is, yes, you can take this answer row and substitute it for row two. Gauss proved it was true. OK, now we're going to change this three to a zero by using row one and row three. So my new recipe step is going to 
mean I have to take row one and add it to row three in order to get a new row three. But let's see. No, that's not going to work by itself. Negative two plus three is one, not zero. So let's see what I have to do. I know that two and three both go evenly into six. I know that two times three is six and three times two is six. What's more, I know that this is negative and this is positive. So just kind of going over my uh, possible recipes in my head, I realized that if I were to multiply row one by three, then this negative two would become negative six. And if I were to add, if I were to multiply row three by positive two, I would get two times positive three is positive six. And what this would get me would be negative six plus positive six. Which is zero which is what I want. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take three times row one. And that will give me three times negative two is negative six. Three times negative nine is negative 27. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. And then, taking my recipe, I'm going to take 2 times row 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 times 1 is 2. And 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Yes. So, Now I have the numbers, all I have to do is add vertically. Negative six plus six is zero. Negative 27 plus 18 is negative nine. Negative three plus two is negative one. And 12, plus negative 10 is the same thing as 12 minus 10, which is two. And this is going to be my new row three. So now, I write down matrix number three. And row one, row two, and row three. So I'll have, all right, all right, right, oh, see? My mind's starting to wander. New row three comes down here and goes in there. First, zero, negative nine, negative one, and two. And now from the immediate previous matrix, which is matrix two, row one, 
is going to go into row one. And row two from here is going to go into row two. So row one is negative two, negative nine, negative one, and four. And row two is zero, 12, zero, zero. And I go ahead and I put the markings. The biggest danger here is making an arithmetic mistake. So you keep an eye on me. I have one more zero to go. And I need to keep that zero. The only way I can keep that zero is if I add it to a zero. So I'm going to have to use row two and row three. So I'll take a number times row two plus a number times row three or not. And that will give me a new row three. Row three gets to be new twice because it needs two zeros. OK, now. I need to be able to add 12 and negative 9 and get a 0. Ain't going to happen in this universe. But I do know that 12 goes evenly into 36 and 9, or negative 9, goes evenly into 36. Bingo! 3 times 12 is 36. And nine times four, or four times nine. Let's keep everything in the right order. Four times nine is 36. So hey, if I take three and multiply all the numbers in row three, uh, row two by three, That'll give me a 36 in that position. And if I take all the numbers in row three and multiply them by four, I'll get negative 36 right there. 36 minus 36 is zero. That's precisely what I need. So three times row two, Three times row two. Three times zero is zero. Three times 12 is 36. Three times zero is zero. And three times zero is zero. Now four times all the numbers in row three. Four times zero is zero. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. Okay. We add vertically. 0 plus 0 is 0. 36 minus 36 is 0. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. And 0 plus 8 is 8. 
and this is going to be my new row three. It's also going to be my last matrix. So matrix four. Row one. Row two. Row three. This guy comes down here. Goes there. Zero, zero, negative four, and eight. Now, row one and row two come from the matrix immediately above. Row one comes down here. Negative two, negative nine, negative one, and four. And row two comes immediately down to here. Zero, 12, zero, zero. Okay, no more matrices, no more row operations. Now we do something called back solving. The first step for back solving is to turn matrix four back into the system it really is with X's, Y's, and Z's. So this is row one, is negative two X, negative two X minus nine Y, minus one Z equals four. And row two is kind of odd looking. It's 12y equals zero. I don't have to put my zeros there and there. Row three is negative four z equals eight. And now, back solving. Why is it called back solving? Because I start with row three, then I go to row two, then I go to row one. Okay, so let's do it. Row three. Negative four Z equals eight. Divide by negative four. Divide by negative four. Z equals negative two. Row two, usually you have a Z term up here, but we don't this time and that's okay. 12Y equals zero. Divide by 12, 
divide by 12. Y equals zero. It's okay to have a zero on the top of a fraction. Now, row one is more complicated. Negative two X minus nine Y minus one Z equals four. We know what Y is, we know what Z is. So negative two X minus nine times zero minus one times negative two equals four. Now that's zero, right? Negative nine times zero is zero, boom. So we'll have negative two X minus one times negative two is going to be plus two equals four. Subtract two, subtract two. Two minus two is zero. So I have negative two X equals four minus two is two. I divide both sides by negative two. Boom, 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 boom. X equals negative one. Now that I know what X, Y, and Z are, I can write my ordered triple. Negative one, zero, negative two. And this, is what I put in the answer box. Okay, now, we're certainly not gonna have time for any of the word problems today. I've had some questions about that, but I'll just answer them privately. <clears throat> and then I'll email the answers out to everybody. So let's do another matrix. Let's do it a little bit faster so that you can see it's all the same steps. It's just steps. Nothing to understand. You just do the steps. It's very mechanical. Okay. Matrix one. Well, okay. Matrix one. You copy down the numbers. Well, let me put row one, row two, and row three. The way I really like to write the numbers down is to go vertically. It helps me not make mistakes. Mistakes in copying are very common. And you know you're doomed when you've written a wrong number and you don't even know you wrote it. There's matrix one. That calls for coffee.
OK, just like before. I'm going to be adding rows together. Sometimes I'll have to multiply the rows, sometimes I won't. I have to be able to add this position and this position together and get a zero. Well, I can do that if. If I recognize that two can be multiplied by four and I'll get an eight, eight plus eight is 16 though, not zero. However, if I add eight to negative eight, I'll get zero. And this two can easily be changed to a negative eight if I multiply by negative four. So, oops, that's row one. I'm not going to do anything to row one. I am going to multiply all the numbers in row two by negative four. Notice that my motivation, all I care about is that position and that position. And whatever happens to these numbers is like, collateral, you know, you've heard collateral damage. Well, collateral computation. Row one. Eight. Negative one. Three. And 13. Now, negative four times row two. Negative four times two is negative eight. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative one is positive four. And negative four times negative four is positive 16. Now I add vertically. Eight minus eight is zero. Negative one plus negative four is negative five. Three plus four is seven. And 13 plus 16 is 29. And this is my new row two. So matrix two. Row one, row two, and row three. This is new row two, so I write it down here. Zero, negative five, seven, twenty nine. And I write row one from up here. Eight, negative one, three, and thirteen. And row three from down here. Well, from up there. Negative six, one, two, negative two. Ta da! Now, Recipe for matrix two. Well, any number times zero is zero, so it won't do me any good to add row two and row three because I won't be able to get rid of my negative six. 
So instead I have to use row one and row three. So we have an eight and a six, negative six. And I know, because of times tables, that eight and six both go evenly into 24. Um, three times eight is 24. And four times negative six will be negative 24. And that'll give me 24 minus 24 is zero. That's how you do this. You figure out what you need. Okay, so I'm gonna say three times row one plus four times row three. And then I'm going to calculate that. Three times row one is three times eight is 24. Three times negative one is negative three. Three times three is nine. 3 times 13 is 39. I never meant to memorize that. 3 times 13 is 39, but it comes up so often that sometimes you accidentally memorize stuff. So that's pretty well stuck in my memory. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Now I add vertically, 24 minus 24 is zero. Negative three plus four is one. Nine plus eight is 17. And 39 minus eight is 31. And this is my new row three. Okay, so we're doing the same thing over and over again, the same steps. Matrix three. Row one, well, I don't. Let's put it here, there's room. Row one, maybe I won't, maybe I'll just erase that or I'll put the zero over a little bit. There you go, just put it there. That's a row one, but it's sloppy, so now it's got more room. Row one, row two, row three, and this is my new row three. Zero. 1, 17, 31. Okay, now row one and row two come down from up here and I'm running out of places to put lines. So row one is eight, negative one, three, and 13. And row two, is zero, negative five, seven, and 29. See, you don't go back to the very beginning, you just go back to the matrix above. OK. 
Okay. Now, this is what I'm left with. How about that? I've got to keep that zero so I can only use row two and row three. So the recipe is going to be adding row two and row three and getting another new row three. Now watch this, I need a zero in this position. If I can add negative five and five, I'll get zero. So the trick to doing that then is to multiply row three by five. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave row two the way it is and multiply row three by five. So row two is zero, negative five, seven, and 29. And row three, ah, five times row three. Five times zero is zero. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 17 is 85. I hate big numbers. And 5 times 31 is even bigger. That's going to be 155. Is that true? 31 times 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 3 is 15. Yes, 155. So, I add 0 plus 0 is 0, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, 7 plus 85 is 92, and 155 plus 29, hmm. 9 plus 5 is 14, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 5 is 8. Bring down the 1. Okay. Now this is my new row 3. And, uh -oh, yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay. So matrix four. Yeah, my brain is getting tired here. Zero, zero, 92, 184. And then row one is eight, negative one, three, and 13. Row two is zero, negative five, seven, and 29. How do you know when you're done? You've got a lower triangle of zeros, which in Gaussian elimination means you're done with the row operations and the matrices. So now we take this, we Excuse me, we turn it back into the system it really is. Eight X minus one Y plus three Z equals 13. 
that's 0x, so negative 5y plus 7z equals 29. And 92z equals 184. So see how we have this wonderful triangle. In row three, we only have one letter to solve for. Let's do it. 92z equals 184. And I happen to know that when you divide both sides by 92, you get two. Because 92 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 9 is 18. That's why I love it. Okay, now we go back to row 2, and I'm going to move that over here just for room. Negative 5y plus 7z equals 29. Z is 2. Negative 5y plus 7 times 2 equals 29. 7 times 2 is 14. Notice I like to go in steps. It's just a good way to not make careless errors. Minus 14, minus 14. Fourteen minus fourteen is zero, so I'm left with negative five y on the left, and over here twenty uh, uh, twenty nine minus fourteen is nine minus four is five, and two minus one is one. Fifteen. Then I divide by negative five, and divide by negative five. Boom! 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 y equals negative 3. All right, now we've only got row 1 to go. 8x minus 1y plus 3z equals 13. All right, so 8x minus 1 times negative 3 plus 3 times 2 equals 13. So 8x minus 1 times negative 3 is plus 3 and 3 times 2 is 6. Now 3 plus 6 is 9. So 8x plus 9 equals 13. Subtract 9. Subtract 9. eight x plus zero is eight x equals thirteen minus nine which is four <clears throat> divide by eight divide by eight so x equals one half four over eight is one half so now you write your ordered triple right here at the end of the page. Isn't that convenient? Um, X is one half. 
y is negative 3, z is 2. And there, is that. Okay, I threw in another matrix, but this isn't your homework. This was in case there was massive lack of understanding. But again, it's just a method. You're conquering a method. You're learning a method. There's nothing really substantive to learn, to understand deeply. Like, um, even I, I've taken a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of math classes in college, and I've never seen the proof, or I don't remember seeing the proof that Gauss used to show that all this stuff is true and will give an accurate answer. And that would be the only understanding is can you understand his proof? I think I have seen it. But it's not something I wanted to look at particularly. So um, it's just a method. Practice the steps to the method. That's all you have to do. Keep your calculator by you to make sure you can add and subtract and multiply and divide numbers. But notice there, there isn't any complicated algebra. All you're doing really is just arithmetic. and then basic equation solving at the end. So I think you're going to look back on this and think, think to yourself at the end of the semester, wow, I wish I could go back to matrices when all it was was arithmetic. Just arithmetic and steps, arithmetic and steps, arithmetic and steps. We'll do the word problems on Monday and then get into what it is we're supposed to be doing next week. Um, yeah, actually Monday we're going to go over the practice exam. So Wednesday, if anybody needs more help, um, I'll do that, but what I'll do is I'll make sure I do the word problems for you. How about that? I'll do the word problems for you. And um, that will help you understand them. OK. How do you feel about this? Feeling good, feeling good. Good, good. OK, give it a try. Um, in about 15 minutes, I'm going to be jumping over to my office hours to help people. If you um, if if you need help, like there was somebody in one of my classes who needed help with a word problem. I'm glad to do that. During my um, office hours. OK, thank you. you yeah, bye weekend. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.